Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. Hi, Eric. I love you. Hello. Love you, too. He hates when I forget to say that, but you already know. All right, so, yeah, he knows. <laughs> so, dude, we're going to talk about ego. We want your wisdom about the ego. It plagues us all. It gets us into so much trouble, but it does give us this illusion of separation that we need to be individual humor, uh, humans walking through life uh, and enduring the human experience. But yes, you can tell me a lot more, I'm sure. Well, the, the ego, we, all, we all need to have the ego. Um, the, the ego actually creates balance as long as it doesn't get out of control. Um, and, and when it, when it gets it's kind of out of control, uh, it's, it, it will create problems in your life, unhappiness in your life, um, issues, issues in your life. Uh, uh, um, a lot of times what he's saying is when the ego is kind of out of, out of, out of balance, uh, it's when there's relationship issues, uh, you have issues at work, you have issues with coworkers. Um, this is a big part of the, uh, of the battle between people when we're here is, is egos being, being out of balance um, and, and creating strife, creating unease. Mm. Well, I mean, what are the positive benefits to uh, having an ego? Uh, well, if, if, you ha if you have it uh, kind of in check, it'll give you the confidence to step outside your comfort zone, to know that you can do what in here you know you're capable of, but you're afraid to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really sometimes in those instances, it's almost like the ego that's driving you to do this, to do the stuff that without it, you, you would have too much fear to do. Mm -hmm. So in primitive man, it seemed like ego was necessary for survival. It, yeah. it, 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 at least that's what Eric said a long time ago. It impels them, it pushes them forward to find the prey and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but I guess it doesn't serve us as much anymore as it did not, then. Not in the same way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because back then it was a lot more about survival. Yeah. Uh, you know, really live or die. Um, yeah. Whereas now the ego is not as much about live or die. Although what he's showing me is like, um, like I get like uh, prisoners. And, and so oh. sometimes when the ego is really bad, it, it really does create a live or die kind of situation. If it, if it gets really out of hand, you, you know, you can end up crossing the line into, you know, committing crimes or, or having cr crimes committed against you. It, it's, um, that's a lot of, I, it's how he's making me feel is that it's a lot of what happens in like mm -hmm. maximum security prisons. I don't know why we're heading in that direction, but um, this is a lot of ego, too much ego. Yeah. Well, are, are there people with no ego? No, everybody has at least some ego. Okay. Uh, sometimes it shows up more in certain areas than in others. For example, uh, yeah. Uh, like, for example, somebody might have an incredibly big ego when it comes to their career and what they do for work and, and have absolutely no ego when it comes to their dating life and, and feeling secure with, um, you know, the opposite sex or somebody they're attracted to. Um, and, and, and that will hinder them. And then the too much ego will also um, create issues. Yeah. So there's too low ego there's neutral kind of perfect imbalance and then there's too much ego so um what does too much ego look like in an individual not in the results but like jealousy i don't know i'm just throwing that out there just yeah, uh, so too much ego i he just showed me like a peacock mm -hmm. um, it will show up somebody who's bragging um you know bragging a lot talking themselves up um and, and also in not giving other people credit for what they are good at too mm -hmm. um this is this is they want you know they kind of want all the credit they think the way that they do it is the right way to do 
you know, whatever it is. And, and to give other people credit for it is not something that you would see with somebody whose ego is a little bit too big. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, what's the difference between self-confidence and ego? Well, because somebody who's self-confident um, doesn't make other people feel insecure. Um, oh. and, you know, there's not that sense of like, oh, I, am I doing this wrong? The, the people around them feel comfortable. Yeah. They feel, they're easy to work with. They're easy to get along with. They're easy to communicate with. Um, as somebody who's coming from a place of a, of a strong ego, there's not that uh, flow of exchange of information. Okay. All right. Uh, what about a narcissist? They have come off as having huge egos. Yeah, that's that's a that's a facade. Um, okay. This is actually the opposite problem. They have created a fantasy kind of world for themselves to, to the outside. It seems like there's a huge ego there when really inside they're they're so fragile. Their ego oh. is so fragile that they've had to create this um, this fake phony. This alias. Thing. This alias. Yeah. This, yeah. what do you call it? Alter, alter ego. There we go. Yes. Um, now, why, why do some people have too low ego? And why do some people have too high ego, too much okay. ego? So it's, what's interesting about this is that it's, um, some people it's in their soul conscious to come here and be this way because others in their life need to experience somebody who has too much ego or too low ego. However, that's not always the case. It's because we are still subject to what happens to us here. It's like nature versus nurture. Mm. Um, so sometimes the ego thing, the narcissistic thing comes because of how we were raised. Um, and, and it can cultivate, it can cultivate those um, personality traits. Um, so how, how Eric is, is saying it is like some people are going to come and they're going to have this big ego because that was part of their soul contract and people in their life need to experience this how it feels with the others where it happens by nurture those people those souls are given the opportunity to maybe not develop this um overinflated ego or to not develop the narcissistic behavior um and then it would be up to them whether they've learned those lessons or not does that does that make sense is that yeah yeah absolutely okay. well i mean my father was a horrible well psychopath but a narcissist and i think that his was a spiritual contract to teach us uh, me and my my sisters and, and uh me how to be assertive how to learn compassion yeah and nurturing and all that stuff. Now, whether all of us learned it or not, who knows, but. Well, yes, how Eric is, is making me feel about that is that it was in the soul contract. However, there were opportunities for him to learn here and not be quite um, to, to the uh, level that he was. And I, and I, I am gonna say son of a bitch. Oh yeah. Oh, he was a son, son of a bitch. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he went overboard, but in the initial thing was, you know, a, a relationship villain to try to teach something and uh, something valuable. And I did get that out of him. Yeah. It's probably good that he was so horribly off the yeah, top uh, to, uh, because, because uh, then we knew there was nothing wrong with us. We knew he was nuts. But anyway, that's a whole other story. What are the solutions yeah. for a person who has very, what, what would make a person have a very low ego? Not enough. Nurture, nature, I don't know. Spiritual well, again, contract. Yeah. Yes, that part of the spiritual contract, that could be part of it. And then again, nature and nurture. Um, off, I, I, without like a strong bond, you know, that will often create a strong bond that childhood will create that low ego, that, that low um, self-esteem that creates this lower ego. Okay. Uh, I think the dog agrees. Uh-oh, get these dogs out of here. They're not supposed to be dark barking. I'm going to get all sorts of hate mail. People hate dogs. YouTube people hate dogs. People okay. love dogs. <laughs> not all of them. 
But I can't, man. It's, I can't control everything. It's just life. No, 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 you can't. No, the dogs were, they were coming in to affirm the, uh, the information. <laughs> there we go. So wait, so a person with a low ego, uh, it can develop a low ego because of a strong bond? What do you mean, Eric? Okay, so like, like if the if the parent child bond is not strong in the beginning, um, that can be part of what creates that low ego, that low self esteem. Oh yeah, I see. The less value that I that I have that I have less value. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, can people have a low ego, but the ego they have is not very healthy? Oh, sure. Yeah. So, yeah what absolutely. does that look like? What does it look um, like, Eric? Oh, I'm so, I, you did cut out there. What was that? So what does that look like, Eric? Uh-oh, internet connection unstable. Okay, it's, it's good. What, what does that look like? A person that has a low ego, but what ego they have is not very healthy. It, uh, it looks uh, oftentimes like a very, very introverted person. Okay. Uh, All right. Somebody who's, yep, to themselves, a, a very introvert uh, is, is how he's not out there, not having a bunch of friends, not doing a bunch of stuff, very to themselves. Okay. Uh, I know people like that, and really, they tend to be kind of selfish. You know, they tend to be, well, I can't do this because I'm fragile. And, you know, they, they tend to be a, a little self-centered. Yeah, and that is... Because they don't... They, they, that's yeah, they, perception. Yeah, because they don't give of the, themselves to others. It's all about them. And that's why they're in their little cocoon. Yeah, and, 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 and it, it is a perception like we never truly know what is going on in somebody else's mind and 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 oftentimes people will make excuses and not tell the truth about why they are or are not doing something um and so we don't ever truly really really know okay all right what about the people with the, they don't seem to have much ego but they're, they're awesome. I mean, they have this humility, like, I don't know, Gandhi, Jesus, whoever. Uh, well, because it's, that's not, it's not ego. It's, it's, it's the balance. It's a balance with the mind, body, and spirit. Uh, so what they have is a confidence, again, that, that confidence without making others feel less than. You know, it's... Okay balance so the ego is there um but it's in check it's and and the mind body spirit are connected um so they can do all these wonderful things and but you even with people like that you never get the sense that they think so highly of themselves they keep, oh okay thank you they remain humble yeah it is yeah. what is what eric just said they remain humble even though they're doing great things Right, because they don't need that those pat on the backs and the praise and all that stuff. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah and it's uh, it's like th what ego you have, uh, it, it only becomes unhealthy if you turn that ego into a tool to either hurt others or to hurt yourself. Is that right? Yes. I think I got that, channeled that from you, Eric, did I? Yes, yeah, oh. yeah, because you can hurt yourself with your own ego. Yeah. Because, and, and, and you wouldn't even necessarily realize it because, again, going back to what I was saying with causing problems with the relationships and with, you know, work and that kind of stuff, that, that's how it would be hurting yourself. Okay. With negative thoughts and, and, and just self-loathing, is that an, a, an example of the ego uh, being a tool against you? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, and, and then that, you know, that, that ties right in with the self-esteem. Yeah. And the more you stay on th those um, thought patterns, it's just a cycle. It just, it, it just repeats and repeats and repeats. Okay. So it seems like on both extremes, it's about self-confidence. 
true, not, I mean, authentic self-confidence, but what are the solutions? How can we bring our ego into balance? Well, see, for a lot of people, there's no solution until you recognize the issue. Ah. And, and that is the key, um, is recognizing, hey, what is it that I'm doing that cre keeps creating this energy in my life? And so many people don't have that self-reflection to say, what is it in my behavior that's creating this cycle for me? Um, and it's almost always ego, right? It's, it's almost always a component of ego. Maybe always, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Ego, self-esteem, um, pride, because, you know, pride, while it's a good thing, sometimes can, can get to the extreme as well. Yeah, if, if it's not authentic, too. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and unless you can look and see what you're, what you're contributing to the issues, then there is, there is really no fixing it. You're just going to keep repeating the cycles because you're going to keep being given lessons to learn until you hopefully learn or you know you come back and try again okay are you saying that people who are seem to constantly struggle what one way or uh, or another is probably rooted in an unhealthy ego balance uh yeah there would definitely be some of that some of that to it um, and, and, and just sometimes people just do destructive behavior because they like it, mm -hmm. um, because they like whatever the feeling it gives them, um, in the moment, in the moment. Um, and then of course there's repercussions after, but it's like a, an impulse, impulse control. So it's not just a simple, it's the ego. Yes. Okay. Component of that, but there's also other components especially when you see people who repeat the patterns over and over yeah. and it's and there's there's a lot going on there that contribute to that and, okay. and they can recognize it unfortunately you're, and i he said doom to repeat it and then he said it's not really doom it's like a, a opportunity to learn again you know uh, and if you don't take the opportunity to learn you're going to be given another opportunity to learn right well, of course some people are suffering in the human experience because they're under the thumb of you know they're in toxic relationships with a person who has an unhealthy um, unbalanced ego so there's that yeah absolutely absolutely so uh, I really recommend another Eckhart Tolle uh, book called the new earth it's all about the ego it is amazing every sentence is like oh my god let me digest that for a while. It's awesome. I actually need to listen to that audio book again. But um, so what else can you tell people with either too weak or too strong an ego? I mean, you said first they need to recognize that. And how do they do that? Do they go to a life coach, a psychologist, a therapist? A, or do they just self-reflect? Any, any or all of the above? Yep. I was just going to say any or all of the above there. Uh, most people, most people need an outside source to kind of validate their information mm -hmm. um, because we do get so caught up in our minds and our perception of stuff. So oftentimes it is helpful to talk to somebody else mm -hmm. um, to get an idea of what's going on. Um, and, and that's whoever, you know, whoever you would trust for that. But then the key would be to listen to that information. Um, if this is somebody you truly trust and they tell you something to look and then yes, yeah, self-reflect. And again, you would have to actively adjust the behavior. You know, you would have to actively be consciously aware of, of changing and working on it. And it's not, it's, uh, he, Eric just said, it's, it's, this is stuff that could take a lifetime to, to learn and to, and to work on. It's not something that's going to happen um quickly especially if it's been a long-term pattern yeah but I, I bet if you practice over and over again and are successful your ego will come into balance eventually but uh, i also recommend uh reading the book not uh, that he has recommended many times non-violent communication because 
then your relationships with, with others are not going to be based on, you know, rooted in, in uh, um, an oversized ego. Yes. Man, you can, and also it's a way to, to work with people with overinflated egos. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, um, this, this kind of stuff, what it does is it retrains your brain. So, uh, you know, you, you focus on it, focus on it, focus on, on retraining your thoughts. And then eventually it, it kind of happens on its own. Um, but it takes effort and it takes work to do that initially. That's true. Anyway, if you've got to go to a life coach, I would recommend Jamin Olavencia, guys. He's so great. He's helping Lucas so much. Uh, it's jaminolavencia.com. He's on the links list, too. Uh, anything else before we close, Eric? Just, he loves you. And uh, he, he just says, you're working so hard. You're working so hard and you're helping so many people. Um, so are you. Yeah, and he was, he, he was just saying the, the sole contract and the agreement that we had, it, it just is, is um, fantastic. Awesome. All right, and Jennifer, you can find her on Facebook, Psychic Medium Jennifer Duran, right? Just look it up. On, or she has the regular Jennifer Duran uh, Facebook uh, page. And uh, anything else you want to share about upcoming events or – are you totally booked up? Are there any openings? Oh yeah, I still have openings. Um, in I have openings in May. I'm I'm pretty well booked up for April, but I have okay. May. Yep. That's awesome. All right, bye everybody. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, be sure you check out Eric's book, My Life After Death: A Memoir from Heaven. It's a page turner. It is so good. I'm not bragging because he wrote it. And also check out my book. I'm kidding. Check out my book, My Son and the Afterlife. Uh, communication with the other side. People like that too, because it, it, it uh, depicts my journey from skeptic to believer, which was a long and hard journey. All right. Bye guys. Talk bye. to you later.